Andreas Constantinou, Vision Mobile. I'm here to present our latest report just launched, uh, Developer Economics 2012. We've measured which platforms developers are using, abandoning, uh, which countries they're coming from, which countries they're seeing downloads from, how much money are they making, how much money is apps, are apps costing, and so on. I'll give you a quick 10-minute uh, snapshot of all this. Um, and this is uh, sponsored by Bluevia, the developer arm of Telefonica, thanks to which this is freely downloadable, 70 pages of charts and uh, research, uh, third report in the series uh, launched just now. So 1,500 developers in our survey, seven different platforms. All the stats here you see are normalized by platform. That's why we talk about developers and not respondents across 83 countries, five different continents. And so I'm going to run through 10 top insights from the report. Uh, to start with, the uh, competition today is among a very different bunch of OEMs and a very different uh, points of competition. So uh, we call this a pyramid of, of handset uh, maker competition, four tiers. Apple, of course, playing at the top in terms of profits, having about 74% of profits in Q1. Uh, Samsung is the role model in the second tier, which is a tier of we call meaningful differentiation. Samsung is a fast follower. The reason they've been able to uh, get um, the rest of the profits practically after Apple is they have two assets. One is they have vertical integration, including the uh, components in the bomb that are the most expensive, like screens and, and hardware. Secondly, because they're the first to market with Android designs. And so in order to be a fast follower and be making profits in the Android camp, you need two ingredients. You need vertical integration with in-house components, which Samsung has, HTC doesn't. And you also need to be the first to market with these components. Everybody else on tier three is competing on price. It's a cutthroat game. You make no profits at all. And then you have the feature phone segment, which, where the, the floor is uh, continually dropping down. Uh, very different market, very different competition. You see on the left-hand side of the chart the um, positions of the different OEMs have the, they've taken over the years, notably RIM and Nokia, who are now pretty much competing on price against the, uh, uh, the Android assemblers. Uh, number two, uh, we're at just above 1 million apps in total. Where are the next 10 million apps coming from? Now, to answer this question, we've plotted this graph where we look at smartphone penetration on the horizontal axis versus user engagement, that means downloads per app uh, sorry, downloads per user per country on the y-axis, and the bubble size is the addressable market. That means the mobile subscribers per country. And so you see most of the downloads today are coming from the countries in the top right quadrant, the, the maturity quadrant. Uh, and all of these countries are moving in, in that direction from uh, lower left to top, uh, top right. And as a result, most of the downloads, the next 10 million apps we believe will come from the uh, opportunity quadrant on the top, on, sorry, on the lower left, which is the, the BRIC countries primarily. Next, uh, we found that tablets are now a mainstream screen for developers, and that is irrespective of what platform you're using. Uh, tablets are being used by 51% of developers. And then if you look at the other sort of hyped screens, TVs, e-readers, games, consoles, they're used by a far lower percentage of developers. This is, again, irrespective of platform. Uh, number seven, Windows is the new cool. And Surface aside, developers have said, again, irrespective of platform, that the, the uh, platform they intend, they plan to adopt next, is Windows Phone. And so the, here you see the, what we call intent share. So we measure the intent of developers to adopt a platform. And you see 2010 versus 2011 numbers. 2011, 57% of developers, irrespective of what they're using, plan to adopt Windows Phone 7. Now, mass exodus at the same time from the B Club. That is the Brew, Blackberry, and Bada. So, Again, we, here we men measure abandoned uh, or intent to abandon platforms. Uh, Brew is actually burning faster than Symbian, and Symbian is, is pretty much a dead platform, as you all know. Uh, but if you look at Brew, Bada, and, and BlackBerry, all of which are, you know, still have plenty of, of money being, being invested by the platform owners, you see that the, the, the developers are actually abandoning these platforms. And if you look at developer intentions, this is the most measurable, I would say, greater testament 
to the future of these platforms than any other market indicator. Moving on, number five, one in three developers live, live below the up poverty line. So we divide, we define this at 500 US dollars per app per month as the minimum amount of money developer needs to make. Again, the average revenue per app we found is in the range of 1,200 to three and a half or three, uh, 3 point nine thousand dollars per month. And uh, we saw the following distribution. So on the left hand side, you see developers who want to make money, who are interested in making money. How many of those per platform are making less than five hundred dollars a month? So on average, it's one third. It varies per platform, as you see. On the right hand side, you see Android, BlackBerry, iOS and Windows Phone, how much money they're actually making per platform per application per month. And of course, this varies by region. It varies by type of application. Overall, we measured about three months to complete uh, an iOS application, for example, and this varies. Now, uh, revenue models. There are 11 revenue models to choose from today, anything from the standardized paper download to uh, the more, let's say, elaborate business models like product placements uh, within the application. Uh, on average, we found that uh, paper download is behind in app purchasing, which is itself behind uh, uh, on-device placements uh, on, 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 on the handset from applications in terms of revenue models. So we came up with this chart. The orange circle shows you the popularity of that revenue model, how many developers are actually using it, again, irrespective of platform. And on the green bars, you see how, man, how much money is our developers making based on that revenue model. So you see the profitability, or actually the revenue making ability of, of revenue models vary. It's actually the picture is much more complex than this for developers. But we are here, we, we measured pretty much the, uh, the, the ability of different uh, revenue models to, to, to monetize. And no surprise, of course, advertising is at the very end. Advertising is a long, uh, long range, uh, large scale model. Number three, iOS most expensive platform to develop on at $27,000 per application. Uh, iOS apps are costing more than any other application to develop for many reasons. I won't go into these. In the chart, you see, again, the average cost uh, we, uh, we, we measured uh, per developer, and that is based on a number of factors, development time, UX time, marketing costs, uh, back-end costs, and all that. Number two, uh, going into the global picture. So we see an imbalance, firstly, between the languages spoken in the world and the languages developers speak, which is an interesting way to look at things. So in this chart, you see in green the languages spoken by the world, Chinese first, then English, then Spanish, Russian, Portuguese, and so on. And in the dotted circle, you see the languages developers speak. In other words, which languages do developers make their application available in? And so you see a large discrepancy, a large oversupply in English, an undersupply in Chinese, an oversupply in French, Spanish, German, and so on. And so this kind of hints at the opportunities in localizing to different languages. And there's, of course, lots of languages here not shown. The other way to look at the global picture is the up trade routes. So if you're a developer in North America, where are you seeing most downloads from? Or if you're a developer in Africa, where are you seeing most downloads from? Are they in country or outside your country? And we came up with this chart, which shows in different colors <coughs> the uh, amount of uh, downloads coming from the developer's own country versus coming from other countries. And you see North America of is, of course, mostly in region, for region, whereas Latin America, which has relatively few opportunities today for developers, is largely an exporting nation. And that varies, again, per continent. And finally, in terms of languages developers speak, you see uh, 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 additional uh, variances. For example, Europe uh, sees developers speaking the most languages, 2.45 languages on average per developer. That is, European developers make their applications available in more languages than developers in other countries. And finally, uh, we frankly have spent four months on this project analyzing data uh, 
day and night practically, but we have more data than we can chew. So we're making the data available on July 2nd on the web, visualized, anonymized, and live. So check back. From, uh, for now, you can go to developereconomics.com and download the report. And that's my email, my Twitter account, and we're always hiring. Thank you.